Centennial. How does it work for like for 400? It's like quad. quad cast. Quad Centennial. We'll get a quad cast for the quad. Let's go. Yes. Okay, we're going into a game one. Here it is. We have Zap going up against Mystery on Battlefield. What do you think about Battlefield for the game one here? How do you Very think? interesting choice. I mean, we do see our bands, of course, FD, TNC, right off the bat from Mr. E, and then right. PS2, and uh, Smash Bros. from Zap, which I completely understand. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to give Lucian too much space to run around with, with FTNC, because you can die so easy off the side blast zones. Mm -hmm. Mr. E doesn't want to deal with this on FD. Right. And neither will I. At least Battlefield has a nice little mixture where you have all this other surface area to run around in and lead the situation that Mr. E can use, and Zap can kind of just go wherever he wants. Right. So far, though, honestly, the platform is working out really well for Mr. E, and I have to say, every single option Mr. E has picked has been pretty fantastic. Waiting on the ledge with these shields to cover the approaching forward airs off the ledge from Zap has been so smart. Pretty much all of the level one tricks that a Bowser Jr. usually gets to implement already covered for Mr. E. Right there, even, that pullback from the side special scouted out. Mr. E looking very comfortable, but Zap trying to fire back. I'm not going to get over how beautiful that maneuver was in that first stop from Mr. E, right. where that pullback was enough, Ow. knowing that the side special was coming right after the fact. But again, Zap, using utilizing the invincibility of the um, of the angel platform to just mm. go into his game plan, get the stock taken, and go right back to a nice reset. Right. Two stocks apiece. We're still really low percentages. We could really could go anyone's way. Yeah, I think that's a little bit of that level two sort of Bowser Jr. tricks. We saw that cannonball floating and just bonk an E right on the head. Perfect timing, great angle. Really good stuff from Zap, a little bit of a lead, and, and now we're seeing the shield kind of falter from Mr. E2. Good landing down here, and oh my goodness, the pullback into the combo to take the stock too? Okay, Zap, okay. I think that was a moment of disaster, the instant we tried pulling back for a really sneaky uh, percentage for sneaky even a, a shield break was enough for Zap to utilize that situation and, you know, really run with it so mm. well. Now we have a really good amount of lead, nice. excellent extra credit, and we're leaving the scene yeah. off stage where Bowser Jr. is so above her. I was trying to find a better word for that, just no. above her in aerial space. You're so space. right, though. You got aerials coming in, you have the cannonballs, you have to worry about the Mecha Koopa, of course. Mm -hmm. So you're just so worried about it, you try to force the issue to get back as soon as you can. But that's exactly what cost Mr. E that game. And I have to say, there was like a pivotal moment. If you go back, watch the VOD, you can see exactly where it all went wrong for Mr. E. All of a sudden, Mr. E playing on the back foot, respectfully, way worse. Like, the patience wasn't there. The, the options weren't scouted out. Zap was just putting all the pressure on. Right here, Mr. E looks so comfortable. But then all of a sudden, after sort of this stock with the cannonball, we see a really big shift. All of a sudden, Mr. E is getting hit from the aerials from the ledge. Yep. All of a sudden, he's getting baited out with the pullback from the side special, right? Like that. It's a very big difference from that first stock where Mr. E looks so comfortable. Hopefully, we can see some more adjustments, but it's going to be back on Battlefield for game two. Back on Battlefield, it is. I, I, I like the confidence. The new bands, of course, from Mr. E, where we are not going to smash it, we're not going to small Battlefield. And I respect it. You want the mm -hmm. extra platform as a way to escape these combos from Zap that he is showcasing so beautifully. But we're still keeping a really nice, even game here. Again, game two could go either way. Game one was only indicator of one bad moment that led to a bad game. But game two can go anyway. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit more of that patience come out. That jab doing so much damage and really good knockback, setting up for a dangerous situation, but good tech for Mr. E. Still on the back foot, though, looking for another big hit, but a few too many big swings from Zap. Ooh, that one was good, though. I like that one. That was good, and excellent DI to not die at that nice deep percentage, but that will absolutely be taking that first stock off of Mr. E, setting the tone once more in favor of Zap. Mm -hmm. Mecha Koopa, even some extra damage, of course. Mr. E, though, one big hit here, especially after whiff grab could set up for the stock, trying to even the game up, but not finding it right now. Ooh, okay, I like that idea. Nice little get off me tool, you like mm -hmm. to see it. You're on ledge though, anything can really happen, and I love the high recovery option we did use for that near to get Zap off of us for a second. Right, right. Still not gonna be taking it quite yet, Zap being the most stubborn individual in the world. Oh, and it's just adding up so quickly, 60% on Mr. E, already one or two funny little combos away from losing that stock, but some good damage here, and hopefully just try and keep Zap up in the air, but nope, that jab is gonna be some big damage. Oh, the Mecha Koopa! Oh, it sticks as well! That's huge, Smart. now we go off stage, love the high recovery, but man! Never count Baby baby Koopa out. That is a funny little combo, if I've ever seen one, I gotta say. <laughs> what crazy 
crazy stuff right there. It's looking a little better now, though. Mr. E kind of putting Zap towards the ledge over and over again here. Damage adding up, and Mr. E not taking a lot. Oh, that was so huge. Wow. Attempted it, but no, not going to be enough. Okay, back up to the stage, trying to use down as a way to nice. get off. But nice parry into the Dolphin Slash once more. Mr. E, this is the, the Mr. E we know who's just in the zone, but that's a miss on the parry. But a missed punish as well. Right. Little tense, kind of flubbing here and there, but still really solid forward tilt. Great angle on the cannonball, trying to force the issue so we don't see that drop down back here for Mr. E. There's going to be a re-grab, though. And there's the punish. Solid. Very solid stuff. Zap trying to, you know, reset the situation by going to a different part of the stage, but not going to be enough. We are off stage, though. Oh! And we're back. <laughs> okay. I'm <Mike> Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I was worried for both of them at different times, but it all worked out. Back on the stage here. Yeah, a little bit of a deficit, but can definitely make it happen, especially this up tilt can lead into a really rough time for Bowser Jr. Ooh, nice. I think we are relying a little bit too much on that side special for Zap, though. You're seeing Mr. E get used to it. No problem right. times you're going to use it in the air, you're going to use it on stage, and you're trying to hit me, but it's going to land for the, the 6,000th time in a row. All it takes is one. That's, that's the problem. Mr. E found so many different ways around so many different side specials, but one missed jump, one missed time aerial, and Zap is ready to spin out, and it's got so much knockback. We've seen it all night tonight. We may see it in one or two or three more sets. It's just solid move, covers so much from such a long distance, and it doesn't have to be committal. We've seen Zap jump out of one million of them. So it's a great tool. Makes the whole character, frankly. He needs it. <laughs> he does. He would he be needs it. miserable.